Hi, so this is the test I promised you in the last one, and that is the Stealth, TaylorMade Stealth, new for 2022 against my old Burner TP from 2007, complete with original head cover. This TaylorMade T uh, Burner TP was my favorite driver for a long time. It was one of the ones I didn't want to throw away. I thought I liked it so much that I kept it even though all these new drivers were coming along. And in my job, it's too tempting to not go with the newest, latest thing. So I kept moving away from it. And every time I pick it up, every time I look at it, I think, oh, it's a really nice shape, really nice feel about it. I think the whole thing just suited me really well. The, the shaft in it was a TaylorMade React Superfast 65 Stiff. It's a graphite design, co-design shaft. And the TP head was, a little bit more open at address. It was actually a fractionally smaller size than the normal burner of this model. And it had that lovely little TP badge on it, which they don't do now. And I kind of wish they would bring that back because I think it really, it was really distinctive and it kind of was a, a mark of a good player if you saw somebody with a TP model, you know, it was something to aspire to. I'm going to hit these against each other. I'm not expecting as much of a difference. I did the test against the Callaway Great Big Bertha recently against the, my current driver, which is the Rogue ST Max, and there was probably about 20 yards of a difference. I'd be surprised if there's much of a difference with these two. I think my driver, my old driver, is a bit shorter as well. You tend to find that what the tour players have drivers are a little bit shorter, which makes their phenomenal distances that they achieve even more amazing. So I'll hit some with the Stealth first and then move on to the TP before I get too knackered. So this is the Stealth I've been trying a bit on the course. Um, it's got a Ventus 5 stiff shaft and it's set at 9.75, I think I've got it on. Or I've got it on the setting that's three degrees open because I was hooking the ball quite badly and I'm still hooking the head off it even at three degrees open so there's maybe possibly a swing fault in there so I'll try and make sure I don't do that too much today. That was a reasonable shot, let's see how far that one goes. 295, so that's a decent one. 109 swing speed, 159 ball speed which is good for me, my record's 161. 2736 on the spin is quite high for me that 13 launch angle but it got out a decent distance if i get over 300 total distance in here i'm doing that's a really good one so anything near that's good what was the carry 269 so that's decent for me think it was good nothing special more of the spin rate, I would expect to see 2080, 156, and what was the boss? 106 swing speed, 13 launch. So not a great strike there, 156 ball speed. So as you don't hit it out of the middle, ball speed drops off. And that's what club manufacturers are always trying to sort is, how can we keep the ball speed up when you don't strike it out of the middle? Again, I think it was all right. Can't always tail in here. Yeah, that's a good one. It's a decent one. Two three seven seven on the spin. 158 ball speed, so better slightly better strike. 15 degree launch, 108 club speed. So pretty good. Not nearly not maxed out yet, but but better. Let's even get one to 300 and then we'll go on to the TP. And a bit far right, but I don't know how good the strike was. Decent 299. Oh, it's only a 155 ball speed, which means there was a bit left in the tank there. If I can get up to 160. 2251 spin, 18 degree launch, really high launch. Shows you launching it high really does give you distance if you can keep the spin down. I feel I need to get a 300 on the board to see if the TP can get there because I have, I know my benchmark and I know that I can get to 300 with this in here, so let's see if we can do it. Better shot, I don't know if it'll quite make it. No. Four left. I'd have a chance, I think, that one. Oh, it's gone left. No. Never quite carries as far as you get the hook spin on it.
that's that flat trajectory. That's got more of a chance. It's not hooking miles. Yeah, see, there you go. It's a flat trajectory. So we've got 161 ball speed, which is my joint record with myself. 110 swing speed, 2342 on the spin. That's been 15 degree launch. I ended up with 270 carry and 305, which is a, a good one for me. I don't often hit 305 in here. So we're onto the TP, see what that's got up its sleeve. So for me, if this TP gets over 300, it's a slightly depressing fact because that means the new ones basically don't go any further than this. So I'm kind of hoping I can't quite get to 300, but I will be trying. Give it everything I've got. It's a shorter shaft as well, so it's at a slight disadvantage from that point of view. A little bit hooky, but a nice shot. 292. Good start. 157 ball speed. 2161 spin. Sometimes can't tell in here. That was all right. Jeez, it was all right. One of those high lobby ones that don't always feel that great. So two, two nine eight, two six nine spin, one oh five swing speed, one fifty four. So I could even get more out of that. Well, unless the ball speed figures won't go up from that because of the face, but we'll see. Bit of hooky, not bad though. Felt like a decent strike. Has it got that tradition? It's a bit hooky. Might not be flat enough, neutral enough to go miles. No. Nice looking driver. This feels good. Maybe the fact it's shorter as well feels actually more controllable. I don't know. Yeah, I don't feel like I'm hitting this as wildly offline. Um, through the beauty of editing, the stealth probably looked better than it was. I hit quite a few wild ones. Wish I could edit it out in the course, actually. That'd be good. It's absolutely going at it and edit your bad ones out. This is really quite consistent in terms of direction. Not quite getting into the 290s as often as I would. I haven't seen ball speed above about 155, 157, I think, possibly. But maybe there's one in there. It's been 158 ball speed, so that's not bad. Nah, too hooky. Felt a solid strike as well, it's a shame. Yeah, 159 on the strike. 159 ball speed, which shows it was a good strike. It's a shame that hadn't flown a bit more neutrally. It would have been uh, could have been a contender for 300 there. A little bit too much hook again. I need to get one of those flat straight ones. 274. Never hit it, your ultimate distance if you're hitting a big slinging hook. It'll run when it lands, obviously, but for ultimate carry, you can just want it up straight and neutral. Too low in the face, I would say. Yeah, I didn't think I'd hit that one. One four nine ball speed. See, that has hit we hit low in the face, and I've suddenly lost ten miles an hour of ball speed. That shows you how striking so important. Oh, that's got a chance. Is it? Is it too hooky? 293, 27, see, I think I could do better. And if 156 ball speed is not even the absolute best strike I could get either. So I think there's a few more yards in this, if I can get it right. Getting to the stage where I need a shower now. Shower break required. One fifty six. I just wonder whether this is as much as I'm going to get. Wouldn't have said so, but I'll take it. We'll flip. Two ninety seven 
off a 155 ball speed, 270 carry. So that's, you know, that's within 80 yards of the best I've hit with the stealth today. I just feel like if it all comes together, there is a two, there is a th just a 300 in here, maybe not a 305, but. Oh, it's got the neutral flight. Oh, I wonder. Yes, look at that. I thought it was in there. Two, so we got 304, 277, 157 ball speed, 2369 on the spin and 18 degrees of launch. One yard off the stealth. I had a feeling. And that is with a club that is actually a fraction shorter. Incredible. So, <laughs> uh, I didn't kind of think it would be as close as that, but, you know, it is. I had to keep going. It took me a little bit longer to get the 304 with the TP, but I don't think I was doing quite as consistently long drives, although it was quite straight as well for me. I think there is an edge still on the new drivers, but that just shows you 2007 is when that came out and we're in 2022 and there's not a lot of difference. I think the upshot is that if you get fitted for a driver, that's first and foremost the most important thing. Because if you're using something that is a bit of a struggle for you in the way that you swing and the way that you load the shaft and into, and how you your impact conditions and launch conditions if you're not maximizing that you're going to struggle and i know that that burner tp really really suited me because when i first got it it started going a lot further than previous drivers i i'd used and i think i lucked into a really good setup for that the, the length of it the shaft flex the way it was kicking the loft, everything about it seemed to suit the way I swing. And this stealth, this is just one I've I've put together in here with the demo shafts. I haven't tested this exhaustively. I don't, it doesn't feel quite as, as comfortable as, as that one does. It may be that there's a better shaft option in there for me and I might be able to eke out a little bit more. But it just shows you that there isn't a massive difference. And I think if you get fitted really well for a modern driver, the technology over the face in terms of forgiveness will be better than that. Not by a huge amount, but I think enough to justify. And I think if your ultimate longest drive will be a fraction longer, I mean, they are governed by the RNA, so there's not gonna be a vast difference. But I think when you're averaging out your strikes, your loss of ball speed will not be as drastic on the stealth as it is on something a bit older. That's where I think you score. The other thing is, it's not gonna stop me buying a new driver. It's probably not gonna stop you buying a new driver, the fact that they're close. You're gonna always be searching for that new club that is gonna potentially give you a bit more distance and a bit more forgiveness. And if nothing else, a bit more confidence. Sometimes when you're not playing well and you, you've got a certain club, you just need an injection of something fresh to actually get you back feeling confident and wanting to hit the ball again rather than dreading the outcome because you're sort of fed up hitting bad shots with a certain club. So the fact that there's not a huge difference, I don't think it's a big deal. I think the clubs are getting gradually better, more forgiveness, and as I say, it's not gonna stop me buying a new driver. Thanks for watching, I uh, hope that was interesting, and if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.